Hello, Ryan here, and welcome to Star Citizen Sunday. This is a weekly show which covers all of the news from the week just past. Be sure to subscribe if you like what you see, and let's get on with it. This week, we get to see the exteriors of cargo decks with a little Hulsey Easter egg. Both the PU and Squadron 42 monthly reports are released, plus we get to see the latest incredible work on ship-to-station docking and docking collars. Not to be missed. So before we begin, I just want to say a big thank you to the YouTube channel Clip of the Day for sponsoring this video. They have asked me to make you guys aware that you can submit your Star Citizen moments to their channel and they will feature them in upcoming videos. Even if you don't have any clips though, be sure to subscribe as I did and enjoy some of the best Star Citizen moments from players, content creators and streamers. I have linked their channel in the description. So on Inside Star Citizen this week, they kicked off by looking at the new Bering GP33 grenade launcher. Now this is slated to come in 3.11 and they say it can be used inside of a ship or outside of course, although I'm certain eventually it'll cause a lot of damage inside ships, so you might want to think twice. Now they want to provide us with as much choice as possible when it comes to damage and weapon types. They want to make sure that they get the balance of this particular weapon right as well it is not easy as they just don't want it to kill everybody but they also don't want it to be useless so they compared it to the normal hand grenade the mark 4 grenade uh, to ensure that the kill radius and damage radius are as they should be initially the launchers grenades were one to one with the mark 4 grenades by bearing but they just found it was way too powerful with the radius that it would produce so they reduced it but have extended the damage radius so it sounds like it will do less kill radius but a extended damage radius so you can take damage but you just won't die now theaters of war they say actually had a lot of play testing with it to try and help tune it and balance it this wasn't with backers this was just in-house and i will say that when you look at these latest scenes of theaters of war in this video they do appear to be now making theaters of war pretty originally sean tracy had said that they first want to make theaters of war fun and then and only then make it pretty so the fact that they are now glamming up this level means it is a good sign that they are very close to releasing it for further testing or open to everybody. Now I personally wouldn't be surprised if they released it to the PTU for everybody next time we see it, but they may require further play sessions with either Cati or separate waves, we just don't know yet. But it does look like it's in its final stages. Going back to the Bayering GP33 grenade launcher, right now the weapon is fully functional, but it's still awaiting audio and animations, and then it'll be ready for 311. Personally, I think it is a necessary weapon to have in the verse, but I think it'll be a fine balance to ensure it isn't an overkill weapon or a bit too OP. So let's hope that they can achieve it. It'll definitely be fun trying it when it does come combined with forced reactions. I need some volunteers. Anyway, next up was a sprint report. The first one was looking at particle lighting, which has been updated closer to a physically based rendering model. This will help reduce the brightness of all the particles and not only make it look better, but it'll also save time now so they don't have to manually balance the particle brightness. They've also added a security spotlight to Lawville, which will give it a more distinct look and personality. I do like this, especially as it adds more to the character of Lawville, with it being a very repressive kind of company and workplace. Each quarter, the vehicle content team are converting more and more ships to the updated hard surface shader. This will allow for wear and tear and additional paint schemes, which will come in the future. I am very excited to see my ships age and get wear and tear over time, really giving you more of an attached feeling to your ship. I think that is something I'm probably most excited for. We also got to see some before and after shots of the existing planets being repainted with the new painting tool, which offers a greater range of variation of assets and color to help add a lot more diversity. This makes it, they say, better looking and much faster and efficient, which is needed to finish off the rest of all the systems. So the quicker that they can build a planet from start to finish, the quicker we will get the rest of Stanton and Pyro and basically the verse. We also got to see them finishing up work on the cargo deck exterior. We will learn more about this, they said, in the next few weeks. There is a lot of variations, they say, to fit with the various space stations, but also the colourful cargo containers are there to help figure out the metrics for compatibility between the space stations and the hull series. So these are likely to be the type of containers that the hull series will be able to transport, which means they won't have to render 
the exact amount of SEU that each of these ships can carry, it'll be all contained within these containers and they won't need to render them, which is a win-win. Now to finish up with, we got to see an early exploration concept for ship to station docking, looking at the potential docking collars that will extend and attach ships that are too large to get close to them. These are just concepts, so not all of these will make it in, but we did get to see an animatic to explore the approach they are going for. And this concept would have a buffer arm to absorb the impact and a second stage connecting collar to make the final seal as Jared put it, a two-stage soft dock hard seal. They said once sound and lighting get their hands on it, you can imagine just how docking will come to life and it is shaping up to be something very special. They did actually bring in one of the concept meshes into the engine so that you can kind of get a feel for how they will look and feel. This is absolutely incredible and I'm so happy that it's making progress now and it is looking amazing. I can't wait to see this evolve and also walk the collar with all of you lot after a long time afloat will be very cool. Also, it will be interesting to see them add various advertisements dotted along the side as you make your way into the station. Good job, CIG. So this week on Star Citizen Live, a member of the lighting team took us through the process of relighting a surface outpost within the universe, showing us how they go about it. I will leave that playing in the background while I go through some of the points that were made. There wasn't a lot to take in for this. It was interesting to see it. And if you are into lighting and interested in this line of work, then I highly suggest watching it. But firstly, it was asked whether Star Citizen plans to implement ray tracing. And they said that they will eventually look into it. But currently the priority is the Gen 12 renderer. Plus with it only really affecting those with RTX cards right now, it is not a priority. But obviously the new 3000 series are going to make ray tracing a lot more attainable for most people, which will hopefully get it pushing a little bit more. And also something to take note is that RTX is just NVIDIA's term for it. The Lumberyard engine does have its own ray tracing tech, which is called voxel based global illumination. But right now it is not their priority until the Gen 12 render is complete. Right now they actually use something called cube maps, which is used for ambient lighting, which will give it a more natural look which does actually sound like ray tracing will replace this once they have figured it out. And I will say that I really like it when it's just pitch black inside. I don't like the sort of idea of faking lights and I know they don't really have a choice right now, but having these pitch black interiors will make the place look really scary, uh, just using a torch to light the way. So I'm very excited for when they do get ray tracing in. They did say that when it comes to performance, they don't shy away from pushing the boundaries, but they do bear in mind that performance is a big factor but over time, when they've been working on the project for so long, they do just sort of get to grips with knowing how far and how much they can get away with. So it makes the, the whole process a lot quicker. Around 80% of the lighting in Star Citizen, they say, does not cast shadows. Those are mostly fill lighting to add the effect. But key lighting or, you know, the major light sources, they do cast shadows and also bounce off surfaces to give more realistic effect. This does sound like something obviously ray tracing would solve. So I'm happy to see that ray tracing is going to start becoming the norm. Now, it's very interesting to see the process. And as I say, if, it's, if this interests you, then I highly suggest watching the full video and getting some information from the actual developer. But lighting, in my opinion, is one of these things that in a game that if it's done wrong, it's very obvious. Whereas if it's done right, it can often be overlooked because you just take it for granted. I really like the lighting in Star Citizen and I do think they do an amazing job, especially in 3.10 with the runtime probes. And that was at Lawville, I think Area 18 is getting them for 3.11. But I actually do think that with the RTX cards recently announced by NVIDIA being priced as they are, they will likely become the norm, especially if they release things like a 3060 and a 3050. Although I'm not sure if they're confirmed yet, I believe the 3060 is, I don't know. Uh, but either way, these cards supporting the next round of ray tracing will begin to make ray tracing the norm and achievable for most people. So most games will start applying these and I 100% think CIG will also make use of them. But once it's more of a priority and obviously once the Gen 12 renderer is complete. Anyway, that was Star Citizen Live. Let's move on. So also this week, there was a new law post called IO North Tower, which highlights ArtCorp's main luxury tower. Both the Squadron 42 and PU monthly reports were released, but do not worry if you haven't been able to read them. You can find my Squadron 42 video linked below in the description and the PU monthly report will be coming sometime early next week. 
And finally, if you haven't checked out the roadmap changes yet, I have covered these in a separate video, also linked in the description below, which highlights some upsides to the delay of server to client networking rework. So that brings us to the end of the show. If you do enjoy my content, please consider subscribing and hitting that like button. Also, I am able to do this thanks to my very generous patrons and channel members. If you appreciate what I do and would like to help make it even better from as little as $1 a month, all of the links are provided below.